Well, good morning, everybody. It's uh, day two in the Sipsy Wilderness. Me and Squidly, or Gone Feral with Squidly, are packing up our little campsite where it was a cold one last night. It was at about freezing and it was wet. It rained pretty much all night, but we made it through. I kept hearing something all night and it just sounded like it was something walking around. So I was either too scared or too lazy to get up and find out what it was. But this morning, and I hope I've got some video of it, I started walking down by Borden Creek here and realized it was an otter. An otter was kind of prancing around down here looking for food and got some video of it. So that was cool. Well, we're gonna get started today, hiking probably 10 or 11 miles, something like that, I don't know. I may say that it was 20 miles just to make it sound better. But we're, we're just gonna saunter around in the Sipsy and just have a good time looking at all the iconic places should be a lot of fun so anyway join us as we go on this second day of the Sipsy wilderness here we go This trip is all about quotes. My, every day we're gonna talk about quotes from different people. And it made Squiggly, Squidly think about, I can't talk this morning, my, my mouth is frozen. It's below freezing. Squidly thought of a quote by his son, Handyman. Squidly, you wanna tell us her quote? Yeah, uh, we were having some kind of conversation and I don't remember what the circumstances were, but he, uh, Handyman was about 11 years old. And he looked at me just as, as straight faced as he could be and said, Dad, there are smart people and there are dumb people. Don't get them confused. <laughs> That's a great quote. <laughs> I wonder if anybody's got me confused with either one of those. <laughs> as we hike in the Sipsy, I'm reminded of some of the videos I saw about the Sipsy and the inception of the Sipsy. There was a lot of controversy in 1975 when this place became a wilderness area. And that's because of the hardwoods. The Bankhead National Forest is known for its timber and a lot of timber comes out of here. But that was a controversy is, can we make it our wilderness area, national wilderness area, with all this great timber down here and finally they convinced people to do it because most of the wilderness areas in the western part of the United States are massive, four to five times larger than this wilderness area. But the powers that be went to Washington and convinced them that a wilderness area could be smaller than some of the larger wilderness areas out west. This is the first area that was under that new provision that allowed wilderness areas to be smaller than just large, vast acreages of land. Even though it is large, I mean, it's what, 25,000 acres just in the Sipsy alone. The Bankhead National Forest, I understand, is around 180,000 acres, but that land can be used for timber and other things. The a wilderness area can only be used just for simple, like we're doing, hiking and things like that. You can't bring motor vehicles in here, you can't have chainsaws and things like that you've got to make it simply wild we're at the intersection of 200 yeah that's 200 over there 200's over there and this begins 209 and here's 209 as Squidly was saying that's 209 so this is the intersection and we have avoided 
the creek crossing by going over the bridge yesterday and staying on the other side of 200, which is what we're on. The 200 runs back that way where we came from. And this is the crossing. And sometimes this crossing can be pretty sketchy. Right now it doesn't look too bad, but I bet it's cold. I bet it's really cold. I bet it's real cold. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna keep moving on. We're at Falls Creek Falls. I'm not sure if you can hear me with the waterfall behind me, but an absolutely stunning place. These falls behind me are just beautiful and the water is coming down pretty good because it rained all last night. It's a nice overhang and then a beautiful spot below and then the creek flows into Borden Creek uh, behind the camera. Just absolutely stunning. One thing about the Sipsi Wilderness that I'll point out on my favorite trail video is that you can see just the clear beauty of all the hardwoods and softwoods that are interlayered in these areas. You see pines and then hardwoods, oaks, white oaks, and uh, all kinds of poplars and different things all around this area. And it makes for such a beautiful place with all the moss on them and different things that you don't get to see in certain timberlands where it's been, uh, the timber has been taken away and then restarted and you just don't have the variations that you see in the Sipsi, which makes it such a special place to come out and see. All right, so this is Sipsi Fork and right over there is Wolf Pen Creek that flows in. And we're gonna cross Sipsi Fork here. And from Wolf Pen, getting on the other side, there's a, there's a pretty well-established trail that will connect us to Eagle Creek. And then from, then we'll go up Eagle Creek and uh, Little Ugly Creek and go see the falls there. I can identify with Little Ugly Creek. Okay, here we go. We're about to get wet and we're about to be cold. Here comes the creek. Woo! All right, Squidley and I are hiking on the Sipsy Fork Creek. It's a trail along the side of it, and it's a beautiful trail. And we had to cross the creek to get over here. My body is starting to thaw out from the knees down from that. So I think my body temperature dropped. How about a few more quotes for this hike? This, this hike is all about quotes. So here's one from Mother Teresa. Spread love wherever you go. Let no one ever come to you without leaving happier. That's a good quote. Well, we're doing a good bit of just good old fashioned bushwhacking. It's not really an established trail that we're on, but we're gonna go to Eagle Creek Falls, Deer Skull Falls, 
and Little Ugly Falls. I think I got that right. Keith was showing we're going back and forth across this creek because when you look forward, you see this, the walls get steep on one side and you know you gotta cross because you can't walk that way. And so we crossed back and forth and he had a good suggestion, which was just go ahead and get wet. And we did. <laughs> and that was the best suggestion because I'm not taking my shoes on and off doing this 50 times. But this place is fantastic. You just feel like you're in a place that nobody's been in a long time. They probably have, but it feels better to me thinking that like I'm some sort of uh, conquistador or something. <laughs> confluence of Little Ugly and Eagle Creek and there's a little bit of disagreement and I've never seen it on a map to be definitive but this is definitely Eagle Creek coming from that way and Little Ugly is definitely coming from this way and the disagreement is what it's called at this point going toward Sipsy Fork. Um, some people say Little Ugly, some people say Eagle. I call it Eagle because if you if you look at the two channels, it's pretty clear that this channel is a continuation of Eagle. Controversial video. Little Ugly or Eagle Creek? Since I'm pretty ugly, we'll just say it's somewhere in between. Yeah, I don't know. We made it to uh, Little Ugly Falls and Deer Skull Falls. There's the two falls there. And then over here. It's absolutely gorgeous. And it takes a while to get here. You gotta come off the beaten path. It's beautiful out here. And I made it. Now we're heading back down to Eagles Creek and we're gonna go to Eagles Creek Falls. That's our next uh, adventure for the day. So join us as we keep going on these awesome little trails and to see these beautiful waterfalls. Welcome to Eagle Creek Falls. We made the long journey up to this falls, taking um, Eagle Creek, I guess. Sorry, all the experts out there, I don't know all the names of the little forks, but 
we were on Ugly Creek and then Wolf's Pen Creek and Squidly knows all this stuff. I don't. This is my first time on this particular trail, but it's absolutely gorgeous. And it is a uh, beautiful waterfall. It's worth the trip to get up here. I got another quote for you guys. This one is by Benjamin Franklin. He says, tell me and I forget. Teach me and I remember. Involve me and I learn. That's a good quote, Benjamin Franklin. Squidly and I got back to um, uh, Sipsy Fork Creek. We've got to go another 50 yards or so down there to where we crossed. But then I stopped and I saw this. And we got to get over there to that other side. So I thought maybe we could use this as an obstacle course and figure out a way across this. And then I said, I'm no American Ninja Warrior. There's no way my 50 year old butt's gonna get across those logs and up the side of that uh, creek over there. We'll just go back to the regular place. Two oh two? Yeah, I think so. This is two oh two going this way. Yeah. When you're going two oh two, you gotta cross this. And this is still Sipsy Fork, right? Correct. You gotta cross there to get on to two oh two. And I don't know which I think it goes that way. So Squidly and I came upon this uh little tree here, and this looks like teeth marks to me. I think this is a little uh beaver. This may be the last episode of As the Crow Flies Hiking. <laughs> Have a little balance. Yes. Oh, that was a log. Oh, that, was, that wasn't Keith. That was a log. I was afraid Keith just fell in. <laughs> We are at the junction of 204, which goes up that way. And we are already on 209, which goes where Squidly is. So that means we're really close, Squidly said, to where we're camping tonight. We're gonna get set up and get dinner. And I think it's gonna be really cold tonight. Yeah. Below freezing. <laughs> Sipsy Fork and Bee Branch is where we are right here at the, you can see maybe the river down below me. We got our, I don't know what this is. Somebody left this. Looks like a little bonfire started. I don't know, but the wood was already here. So we'll use it. Right now we're gonna get all of our uh, food cooked, build a fire hopefully, but it was wet last night. So I don't know if we're gonna be able to get a fire going. We'll try. All right, tonight on the menu is a peak refuel chicken Alfredo pasta. One cup of boiling water, cook it on the stove, and we're in business. Let's eat.
it's getting late. We could not get the fire going. It was just so wet. Everything, all the logs were wet. So he'll turn into his tent and I'm gonna turn into my bivy here. And, uh, see if we can survive the night. It's gonna be below freezing. We think somewhere around 29, 30 degrees, something like that. I can already feel it. It's very cold. So I am uh, gonna get in this sleeping bag and see if I can stay warm. I've got every piece of clothing I have on. <laughs> anyway, I guess this will end day two of return to the Sipsy Wilderness. And I will see you in the morning.